drop it. No direction, man. You just don't have that chance often in daily life to see a day in the life of the mountains. And that's what it is. When I grew up, I was used to chasing cows around and herding animals and whatnot in my welding and boots. That was my experience of countryside. My father was big involved in a track and field and cross country back in Wexford. As a kid, we did a little bit of cross country, but I was always at the back end of the races. I cared much more about hurling and Gaelic football, and then as I moved into college, lacrosse. In our home is early rising, working, helping to run the farm, assisting every way we can. He knew that his future wasn't in farming, so I spent quite a bit of time at sport or going to training. Then I moved here to San Francisco and I found myself involved in the really healthy trail running community here in the Bay Area. But that's not home. So I'm going back to Ireland and I'm going to tackle, and the, tackle this route called the Wicklow Round. There is 26 peaks in this range and they have an anti-clockwise loop that tags every peak in the range that people try to do under 24 hours. Oh wait, no, he's running 26 mountains. At one time. Not just one. No, it's oh, all the, the whole range. The whole range. That <laughs> sounds strange all right, doesn't it? You're not allowed to use GPS. You have to use a compass and a map. I'm gonna get back and explore at home. I and mean, this is like an iconic route. A lot of very good runners have done it before me. I want to follow in their footsteps and fuck it, try to take down the record if I can. So I'm Joel Aller, um, I'm Dublin born and bred, I'm one of the founders of the Wicklow Round. My name is Maura Sullivan, I live in Northern Ireland and I'm the first person to have completed the Wicklow Round. My name is Ian Keith, I was the second person to take on the Wicklow Round. Uh, less than 24 hours after the first person. Set the record back then and held it for way too long, around 10 years until uh, String Bean came along and finally smashed it last year. My name is Joe McConaughey. I'm an ultra runner from Seattle, Washington. I set the self-supported and supported FKT on the Appalachian Trail. Most recently, I set the FKT on the Wicklow Round. What I'm really excited about for this trip is actually get home and get to know the Irish mountain running community better. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain has switched on the seatbelt sign. We want to explore what I always had on my doorstep but never realised. So what's the spot we're heading up to? Of course so. Okay. See Martin, that one is on? Yeah. Let's me up. Yeah. So this far as I could get. Okay. Where does no check come out of it in at all? The patchwork. You don't have anything like that in the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's nothing here. It's all yeah. outside. Because my mum sent me over like a, a box of 50 bags or something like that. Okay, so I'll see you down in my clothes, yeah? Best of luck. Keep the ground. Yeah. Joe, what's the crack? Doing good, man. Just walking the streets of Paris. Nice. I'm sitting here stocking up on digestive biscuits. So I shot Ian uh, an email. Yeah. And I was like, I hope he beats our record, so I have a reason to go back after it again. Yes. Well, I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best, but it's uh, you made it. You didn't make it easy. As long as you don't get lost, that would be. <laughs> There's a reasonably high likelihood of that happening. All right, I'll chat to you soon, lad. Right, see you, buddy. See ya. Bye bye. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We're going to take this one from Sally Gap on the gate. Glenn Lock the sheep. If it fails, 30 you seconds. Take the watch. I don't think 30 it's seconds. Like, seconds like, yeah. to you. yeah, yeah. You're some man. <laughs> like, you guys ask, what's the challenge about <laughs> the round? <laughs> and it's the fact there's no start line. You've made the decision to be here right now, at this time, on this day. <laughs> That's the toughest part. Oh, well birthday. done. Please <laughs> <laughs> birthday at all. <laughs> yeah, which way is it? This way or that way? <laughs> The brands come from a kind of a competition over in the UK where they would start in one place and then you'd have to see how many peaks you could get over and get back to the same place within 24 hours. Just so happened with the Wicklow Rand then, instead of somebody going out to see how many they could do within 24, they just decided, okay, these are the 26 you have to hit. When we were following the Bob Graham around, I was very strong on one point, that we wouldn't allow pacers or navigators. If we allowed that, it was an endurance race. It, it, it wasn't a mountain navigation challenge, which is what I wanted it to be. Uh, originally, people didn't think it was possible, but now the times have gone down and down, so we know it, we know it is. It's more it's really a question how quick you can go around it. I got the kid more for 4.30. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's so grand! Uh, we were down there last time, Gav, didn't we? On paper, the Wicklow Round actually looks relatively easy compared to, say, the Bob Graham. But what makes the Wicklow Round interesting is the terrain. One of the main reasons I want to take on a challenge like this is my unfamiliarity with this approach. All the races I do here are on well-marked courses where you just have to follow the flags. I really like the added challenge of actually having to direct yourself around these mountains because that's pure mountain running where you get out and you have to find your way from A to B. So quite often you have to go out beforehand and see how am I going to do this. I'm Paul, I'm originally from Carlo. Even if I'm going your way, like where does the where do you cross where it it isn't like horrendous? There's a little dam here yeah. across the river. Yeah. Slow down, you're on too fast. My name is Karina Yonina, I'm from Mayo and I hold the women's weekly round record. The fence turns and you keep going, it goes up. You can actually pick up a deer track going up straight up to the... Let's pull it up. If it's good weather, he aims for this part here. Yeah. Which corner it's of the field? The corner of the field and yeah. then there's a deer track. Yeah. My name's Greg Byrne, I'm from Lucan, which is a village just outside of Dublin. Basically all the mountains in Wicklow are flat and if we were there in the mist, you'd probably have a great competition, guess yeah. the summit you're on. Because yeah. most of them look the exact same yeah. in the mist. Yes. <laughs> Here we are at Byrne, here's the international, there's the prospect for the Wicklow route. Last year was a string bean got the most beautiful day yeah, of the entire did. year. Paddy's taken on a much stiffer challenge in my opinion because of the wind, the temperature, the ground conditions and the length of the day. Lovely Irish day. I'm here between Stony Clap Top, Mulla Clavon. Visibility is uh could be a bit better. Ten minutes ahead. Let me go. Let's keep going. When I say there's a lack of paths, that, that's not strictly true. There are what you we might refer to as rat passes. Tiny little trails either made by sheep or deer or um, hill walkers. And the only really way you get to know them is being out there. And I've been walking in the Wicklow Hills, must be 40, 50 years now. It was gone wrong. Down there. Kept following the contour down. Not a cabal. But lo and behold, the fog came out below. Got Billy Burns gap. Yo. Sugar water. I've taken a lot of wrong turns, but corrected them. 
You're going to be into the wind now, so don't throw the jacket over the top of the bag if you need. Yeah, Just yeah, open yeah, the zip down yeah, yeah. yeah. Less talk and more running. Less talk and more running. Cheers, lads. You're running for probably somewhere between 16 and 19 hours. In that period, you are going to have a low point. How do you challenge through that? It's right on the edge of what's doable. So the, the harder you make things to do, the more worthwhile it is to do it. The conditions of the Quilla in, and in general, they're Baltic. If he beats the record today in these conditions, that's not just beating the record, that's setting a new standard for the record. This fucking wind is absolutely crushing me. Just right into a headwind. Jeez. It really becomes a test of the person, not just a test of your running ability. I'm having fun, except awkward to have my was the one of the most horrendous running experiences of my life. I think I was just kind of in a period of my life when I needed to prove myself to myself, to be honest. Sometimes the mountains let you become more confident in yourself. When you're out in the trails, you're not just suffering, you're also going somewhere. You're making a journey. The name is uh, John Lanahan, and I was born and reared in a very mountainous landscape here in Kerry. I left school very early to work on the family farm as, as an only son. When I got involved locally in my own area in running, people were saying that I should be put on medication because it, it wasn't a done thing in my area at the time. But to go from being, I suppose, a loner, now I was mixing with guys who had the same love and the same passion that I had. And it's fair to say that over the years, those runners became like family to me. And to me, I think it was, was life-saving for me, actually, you know? He's, uh, he's on the wrong track, so we don't know where he's going to come down. We were hoping he'd come out here, but he's up here, so... Hi, how's it going? Hi, Paddy, how are you? That Hi, Paddy. How far ahead of Joe am I? Uh, four, uh, grand, grand. How far? I want to know. Two high end. Four, two high end, I'd say. Yeah, Paddy, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. It was really fun to have streaming cameras as well, dude, because it really kind of showed that there's something going on here, and it was great to see someone so talented to actually take an interest. Hopefully Paddy's right now, if he takes it, we'll kind of keep the the momentum going with the round and with Irish Met running in general. We saw him at Drum Golf and he looked fine, except his stockings were very dirty. So fucking 
windy up there, right? There's a headwind, you can't move into it, like you're walking down here. It's heartbreaking to see them leave from this point on. Got so much rain. I like doing events where you're running in the footsteps of legends, is how I call it. It gives you a newfound respect for what people have been doing over the years. These guys running around in the 1970s were actually legends. So where's Paddy now? Paddy's on our side. He's already Paddy's dropped down. Just Then you should be back in the road. Quarter to seven. Hour and a half, holy fuck. If you can cut it down. I can. An hour 20. Okay. Oh, like... I learned so much about myself on the Wicklow Round. It's not as much about the day as the journey. I lived here for well, my first 25 years. We have the N11 runs east of these mountains up to Dublin, which is just over the crest there. Yeah, I went to college in Dublin for eight years, drove up and down that road to Wexford hundreds of times, never looked in to see these mountains just right inside of it. It's pretty mad to have an opportunity to run nearly every single one of them in a day. When you end up going out in the hills, at the end of a run, everybody shares that joy. After breaking the record and setting kind of the new, I guess, standard with the Wicklow round, I'm excited to see more people go for it. I'm excited for it to be beaten and have the opportunity to come back and try to take it back. As more people finish it, maybe that becomes more relevant, where people will look at it and go, well, if he did it, I can do it. It's been really special to meet all these pillars of the Irish trail running community, but also to meet a lot of the kind of up and comers. What's your favourite thing about going out and running on the trails, running on the hills? You're just free, there's no one around. It's just quiet. Yeah. And you've no one around you. It's just you in the trail. Yeah. And yeah. you in the mountain. Yeah. I found this trail running club. I thought, oh, this would be cool, might meet some people, but I didn't expect it to become a big part of my life or anything. Yeah. And it just took off. When I was about 12 or 13, my mum brought me down to, to Braden to do my first Emma race. Like the whole Emma communities at the start as well were just really nice people. Like. Hopefully this year, if I make the European team, that would be Switzerland and then the Youth Cup again in Italy. So that's the goals that's for this close. year. <laughs> Ultra running is growing so fast in this country. When I arrived there, there was um, it was the same people at every race. I think Munster had like six races or something in the year, compared to now we have like, I don't know, nearly 40. It's definitely a possibility to get more people involved and they just need to be aware that it's there and it's aware that it's for people like them. Like this has been the last hour of a drive up and like I don't know now. I went from like, oh that's kind of sad, after eight days I could be losing it. Then it comes to excitement because you're like pumped for him, for hammering it, pumped for an Irish lad coming through and not need more time off of it. What's next is that more women get into it and that more go off trail and 
are happy to go out with a map and compass and explore the mountains and go further and faster. So hopefully there'll be another woman finishing this year. Yeah. And then I don't want the next woman to be nine years after her. Happen there. No, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be the four sub 16. You could. <laughs> Come on, Ben! He, he beat me for 16 hours. You want to finish the job and do a perfect sense. It's such a stellar day. That's wild. A fucking three minute gap or something. Like that. <laughs> Go. Go on. There's nothing better than coming down off the hill, finding the pub with the open peat fire, having a bowl of super chowder and telling somebody about this adventure you had and how you never thought you'd get home. <laughs> yeah, I took a third one. Try to get 17. Great. That was a great moment. I've done a lot of things in my life and I've been a lot of places and I've always been drawn back to Ireland and I've always been drawn back to its mountains. Oh, the bog, it got you. Possibly the first evening we brought him to the running track, they had a race for tots and he didn't want to get in and I took off his stockings and I put him in and he ran crying down the track and uh, he got, they all got medals and a lollipop, <laughs> or, or maybe just lollipops. And this is the song I'm gonna be singing in my head the whole way around. The Lost Tribe of the Wicklow Mountains. I believe in them, so they do exist. Way up in the Wicklow Mountains, it is easier height than you think. Are you ever going to do the Wicklow Round? You're going to do the round, aren't you, Lodi? Yeah, defo. By far the most heinous run I've ever done. Can we go, can we go to the hills? <laughs>